Greetings ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Maxi here once again and I'm back for the likes of the Max Toys videos once again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more Let's Play of Donkey Kong 64 for the Nintendo 64. So last time we did essentially did manage to start the game as in not only just try to able to go through four uh, tutorial stuff, and on top of that, we did obtain the first golden banana at Donkey Kong. And that's about it, basically. So today, for this video, is the fact that we're about to get started with the first world in a game known as Jungle Japes. In this case, the most familiar uh, world environment, essentially in a jungle environment. So, but this time, in 3D, of course. So as a result, we might be able to actually stumble across the familiar... Uh, mechanics like for instance you know with the vine to vine to able to jump through and also some bananas to collect and uh anything else as far as this is concerned so yeah we'll just essentially activate that switch up there not able to progress and uh everything else will be more uh self-explanatory for the most part now let's talk about the forms of the collectibles in the game as you can tell that we actually already collected not only certain bananas, but also the banana coins as well. And because of this though, the main emphasis on this particular playthrough, as far as you know how the fact that I mentioned this before, I'm actually going to be going for 100% completion, or technically 101% completion of the game, because in order to able to do that, you have to collect every single bananas, or technically speaking, you don't necessarily try to able to go after 100 of those bananas, Although I'll explain more details about that, because this is where we rescue Diddy Kong. So in this case, though, one of the uh, next playable characters we can able to unlock if we do somehow manage to rescue him somehow. So, uh, anywho. Uh, uh, yeah, today's day is, of course, the, uh, the 4th of January today. In this case, in 2023 today. Not much else is going on at the moment, apart from the fact that, well, I've somehow managed to able to receive... Oh, and by the way, remember that particular part about the fact that, yeah, we've already technically seen that particular, um, barrel thing, you know, where it shows us the Donkey Kong icon at the moment. Well, that's what you essentially try to able to, like, well, I'll explain more details about that until whenever you rescue Diddy Kong first, so... But anyways, uh, in terms of collectibles in this game, as I mentioned this before, there are not only bananas, but there's also banana coins as well. And on top of that, there's going to be golden bananas as well. And there's also certain special uh, items throughout the game, which there are uh, not only those two items, but it's also with the forms of the special crowns and um, the banana medals. And in order to be able to get the banana medals, which, by the way, you have to do this, like, multiple times within each character, and because of that, you have to collect about 75 of those bananas until you're able to get yourselves the banana medal. That way, it will not able to actually consume you about the fact that, well, at least unlike any forms of how it does it on the forms of Banjo-Kazooie, that in order to be able to actually watch percent everything, in uh, Banjo Kazooie, that you have to essentially try to able to get every single music notes if you decide to go for that desire. Although on the N64 version, it makes things a bit tricky for you. Whilst in the forms of any Xbox Live Arcade version, like either on the Xbox 360 or Xbox One or um, Series X, for that matter, then basically you can able to actually like save your progress with your. Uh, you know, music notes collecting without needing to be able to worry about the archaic uh, design choice, so... Ah, oh, dang it, I somehow screwed this up. But that's okay, because you can essentially just be able to retry this particular part anytime and whatever you wanted to, so... Because, uh, yeah, as you can tell, we ended up on the e uh, Beaver Brawl, as you can tell. And basically, that's how you essentially you get yourselves these special battle crowns. And basically, though, you have to... Let's just say it's a bit like a survival kind of task. And basically, all you have to really do is just survive for about 30 seconds. And then once you've done so already, then you were able to claim your reward. And because of that, though, I don't know how many of these uh, battle crowns there are. But I'm presuming to you, it might actually contain, like, 10 or anything else to be more specifically. Well, mind you, it's been very, 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 very long time since i actually known about this. So, there we go. That's one of the first crowns we've got. And once you're done with that, the actual uh, K-Roll 
uh, pad has been disappeared, meaning that you've actually completed that challenge. So, yeah, everything else goes all fun and dandy, so... And of course, to be expected that we will come across into not only regular bananas, but also a banana bunch, and from here, this is where we meet up with Funky's store. Hey, Funky Kong, how's it all going? I see you've almost dressed up like a Walt Wall Syndrome. So basically, this is where you're able to actually give yourselves the weapons of the game. So basically, what Funky Kong is trying to tell us, that we must able to pay banana coins. And that could be also applies for the likes of the forms of Cranky's Lab, and especially noticeable later on, that we will able to actually get ourselves our another mandatory item we can get, although we'll explain more details about that at some form or another, so... So from here, we're now able to actually use the first weapon in the game, specifically for Donkey Kong's case. And from here, we get ourselves the Coconut Gun, so, or Coconut Bazooka. So in some cases though, all we can really do is just basically use the fact that we have to crouch, and then, um, I would classify for saying, uh, press the left C button. So, although unfortunately though, since I'm going to be playing this on the Wii U, this also means I have to use the sensitivity with all that analog stick and that can be extremely sensitive sometimes because every time whenever I manage to able to fiddle around with my uh, right analog stick sometimes though it always leads me to first person view so that could be kind of awkward to get used to but at least that's something so anyway so let's go up here to see what's gonna be up there I'm guessing it's gonna be yep another bunch of bananas so hopefully we're able to get more of them and let's hop into this cannon. And from here, this is where we're able to meet up with Diddy Kong. So, and also we got ourselves the second golden banana. So, and now he's trying to tell us something about the fact that we need able to activate uh, not only one, but also three coconut uh, symbol switches. And if you've done so already, then I can assure you, you're able to actually open up, um, you know, certain areas. Although, that about the fact that we'll uh, uh, do that in a second, because obviously about the fact the matter is though, I'm going to have to mainly focusing on, you know, trying to find those more of those uh, numbered uh, banana uh, pads or anything else to be more specific. So it makes the actual backtracking not so much of an issue. So, and by the way, this is the forms of Snipes HQ. And basically, he's trying to tell us about the fact that we need to get that another collectible that is pretty much um, worth it as far as, well, it's hard to explain really, because again, it's been a very long time since I actually last played this game. But basically, he's trying to tell us there's another item called the Blueprint, as you can see. And basically, though, that's how about the fact that, well, if you stumble across those tougher enemies known as the forms of cronies or something, basi basically, though, is the fact that you would be able to actually get the Blueprint. So, yeah, there's nothing we can do in here at the moment because we haven't got one yet, so... Oh yeah, there are a few occasional moments where you're able to stumble across those banana balloons, and basically if you dare pop it, you're able to actually get 10 additional uh, uh, bananas, if I'm presuming so already, so... Yeah, everything else will be pretty cool by then. But uh, here's the thing about the forms of the collectible system in this game, that as you notice that we keep on collecting yellow bananas as Donkey Kong, this also means, eventually, if we're able to unlock more characters, specifically, for example, if we're able to actually unlock Diddy Kong in this particular stage, basically, though, he doesn't usually collect the exactly the same colored bananas as Donkey Kong's was. So instead of that, uh, you have to be able to collect the separate um, colored banana, which, as a result, will point out whatever we're able to do unlock him first. So, anyway, so let's just go ahead and... Uh, Shoot those switches from, uh, from below, and, um, hopefully it won't be giving me that much trouble, I don't think. So, okay, so there's one right here. Because, uh, yeah, sometimes you always have to deal with the forms of, you know, certain switch puzzles before you're able to actually just to unlock more characters and stuff like that, so... Anyway, so, so let's just go ahead and uh, keep on moving and find the next switch somewhere. 
So in some cases though, it's actually not that far. So we'll just, uh, I think I highly recommend you're able to go into like first person view while you're using your weapon. So that makes it, uh, it makes the actual Amy radical a bit easy to manage. Although sometimes though, it can be rather sensitive sometimes, even on the Wii U version of the game. So anyways, let's shoot it from here. Oh, really? Okay, there we go. The second switch has now been active, and now we need to find the third and final one, which is also not too far from here. Oh, and by the way, in order to able to get more ammo, is the fact that, obviously, if you see those little boxes right there, that essentially gives you some more ammo for your coconuts. So, at least specifically for Donkey Kong, so... And also, as you can see, we got ourselves the watermelon, and every time when we get hit, we lose a slice of uh, watermelon. And thankfully though, unlike any forms of how it does it on any other Donkey Kong Country games, including um, Donkey Kong Land games on the Game Boy, basically though, there is no way you can able to get a game over unless that just like any forms of how it does it in Banjo-Kazooie, that uh, if you manage to leave the game, basically though, you get yourselves a game over cutscene as well as the instant game over if you do so, which I don't know if I'm also showed that right now, because obviously we just managed to able to go started with the game, so... Anyway, so since we've now rescued Diddy Kong, so this means we can now finally select him on the forms of that barrel selection screen, when it comes to the character select. But, uh, either way though, let's just go ahead and, uh, keep on take control of, uh, Donkey Kong for a while, because obviously we still need able to find a lot of collectibles for the sake of, you know, Bananas, as well as banana coins, and most importantly is, of course, golden bananas themselves. But, uh, anywho. So, um, anyway, I was, as I was saying when it comes to playing Mario Kart Tour recently, that I finally managed able to get myself not only one, but two racing me suits. In some cases, though, I've got myself the black color, thanks to the forms that I've ranked, uh, tier system, which I'm still not a big fan of, Especially considering it, it, it will lead me to a lot of bad luck situations. And on top of that, I somehow also got myself the Mario Racing suit for uh, my me. So, either way though, at the very least, at this point, we're now up to like 120 drivers. Which is, I'm not gonna lie, is actually pretty cool. Although, despite the fact that I'm still a little bit far behind when it comes to other events for like, you know, getting like high-end drivers or anything else like that. And then, also, eventually, though, assuming if I was going to be lucky by that, hopefully I'm also give myself not only my another me, uh, driver, which appears to be the question mark, uh, racing suit, but also another variation of, uh, well, Toad Pit Crew, but this time green color. So, hopefully that might be, uh, make it happening for my luck dependent or something, but, nah, as far as saying goes, that's about it. Alright, so we're now on to this next area of sorts, but uh, first off, before we're able to actually just do like, not only get that banana balloon, but also with the forms to try to enter in uh, Cranky's uh, lab, I'm gonna be able to like, activate that particular, you know, the pad as far as I've already done. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and pop the, uh, the banana balloon for Donkey Kong right here. Oh, come on. There we go. So, as you can tell, I've only got about uh, five bananas left. But, at the very least, thankfully though, well, first of all, let me go ahead and uh, um, activate first person view. And, son of a biscuit! That gosh darn beaver just somehow gets in my way sometimes. But at the very least though, every time when you uh, kill the enemy, basically though, is the fact that the watermelon piece will be uh, uh, released. And another thing is the fact that every time when you finish killing the enemy, the enemies do respawn. So, yeah, that could be rather amusing sometimes. So, anyways, though, so the reason why we've opened up this particular door right here, or this little cage, that's only mainly because, well, not only do I get myself my first banana medal after collecting 75 bananas, 
and also three more banana coins as Donkey Kong. And also we've meet up with that familiar animal buddy, which appears to be Rambi the Rhinoceros. Yes, he does make a return after the events of not only Donkey Kong Country, but also Donkey Kong Country 2, except Donkey Kong Country 3, just because it's been replaced by uh, Ellie the Elephant, basically. So basically, uh, Rambi the Rhinoceros plays pretty much exactly like the events of how it does in the, uh, you know, two Donkey Kong games specifically, Donkey Kong Countries 1 and 2. Because basically, all he really does is that he can able to actually charge into enemies. And also, uh, if you think you've had enough doing the forms of the transformation or turn into an animal body, basically, you would be able to actually just press the, uh, I would say the Z, better, Z button, as well as the forms of uh, the C button on the left, or something like that. But either way, though, that might be saying something. So, although I may be wrong, but either way, let's just go ahead and use the. Uh, number four pad right here because now we've actually activated the switch for Donkey Kong so that means I can able to get myself um, another golden banana so because uh, for the most part the first world is pretty simple and easy just to get used to the main mechanics of the game so and I think if I recall correctly in each and every single world uh, for those five playable characters only have like five golden bananas in each world as far as I'm aware, well mind you, in a grand total of these golden bananas in each world, it might actually be roughly about 25 in each world. So, yeah, we might actually go a little bit more of a double up kind of syndrome or something like that. Well, I don't know about you, but either way, let's just go ahead and, uh, well, you know, just try to deal with some more B first before we're able to activate our ramp B again. Because I get the strong sense of feeling there might be a bit of a useful, uh, thing to do if we do somehow manage to able to become Rambi right here and uh, yeah I was expecting if I was trying to able to get something from uh, Cranky's lab but I think I should probably save that in uh, the later portion and something tells me that yeah much like the forms of how it does on certain transformations within not only um, I would say in the forms have been Banjo Kazooie, but also Banjo Tui as well. Uh, if you go further away onto certain sections, basically though, you will instantly transform back into yourself. So, except the fact that there's no uh, dialogue boxes or anything else to be more specifically, when it's like, you know, magic wears off uh, um, every once in a while. But either way though, that might be saying something, so. Alright, so we'll just uh, try to keep on doing this again, so just to ensure I might as well get this uh, correct. But uh, I think something tells me I need to go to slightly to the left, because something tells me about the fact that there's going to be a, uh, a familiar icon showing up somewhere. So because of that, yeah, we'll just go ahead and find that. So yeah, it appears to be on the left, so yeah, there it is right there. So, hopefully, I will be able to actually just start, uh, you know, try to charge up and then just smack the actual uh, Rambi's uh, wall icon. And I think that pretty much activates, let's say, a shortcut of any sort. So, thankfully, you don't need to necessarily try to able to deal with, like, well, I don't know about you. So, anyways, let's get into the Cranky's lab and able to get ourselves our next ability for Donkey Kong. And just like the forms of how it does it in uh, Funky's store, you also need to utilize the banana coins in order to able to spend on something. Because technically, we've already did manage to learn uh, the first move uh, during the course of in uh, the beginning portion of the game, which is a simple ground pound. But in here, we need to pay three banana coins, and from here we get ourselves Baboon um, Blast. Which, it'll be mandatory if you really want to go after all these kinds of collectibles. And basically, what Cranky Kong is trying to tell us is that if you ever find yourselves the actual pad that features Donkey Kong's face on it, basically you would blast yourself all the way up. And basically though, taking a notice from the likes of any other Donkey Kong Country games, it'll pretty much lead you to special areas, so... But we'll uh, see more about it until whenever I decide to able to look around on certain stuff. And of course, I've already uh, activated that switch from earlier we go. So, uh, yeah, for the most part, though, is the fact that as far as I think I might as well try to say this right now, but I might as well say this again anyway. 
This is going to be one of the longest Donkey Kong Let's Plays we've ever going to be considered doing. Uh, well, at least technically after the events of uh, uh, Donkey Kong uh, Jungle Beat within both uh, Nintendo GameCube and the Wii versions. That basically does the fact that we did somehow manage to go through each and every single kingdom. Whilst, I don't know about the fonts the length of this though, but either way though, because again, wish me luck for able to actually go for 101% in the game, so... Because there are certain missions that are pretty self-explanatory and easy to manage, but there are certain missions that are pretty much a pain to deal with, which, as a result, we will point things out until whatever we get to that certain point, so... So anyways, as you can see, we actually stumbled across a barrel blasting segment ever since the good old Donkey Kong Country days. Except this time around though, we're in 3D of course. And basically, just like it informs of how it does it in Donkey Kong Country games, including the Donkey Kong Land games as well, you have to do a bit of a timing thing, because otherwise, if you time it wrong, basically you fall into the actual, uh, the clouds below. Although, frankly, you can able to retry this particular segment multiple times, if you keep on messing things up. So basically, all you have to get for this point is another golden banana for Donkey Kong. So that will lead us to five. So, nicely done for this point. So, uh, I think that pretty much takes care of the forms of Donkey Kong for now on, though. Until specifically, whatever we get to the boss. Because, yes, in each and every single world, they does manage to able to contain boss fights in here. Well, that was before when Banjo 2 kind of does the same thing as well. Except that in the forms of in Banjo 2 you have to find the forms of certain boss battles for yourselves. Well, at least be more specifically, though, although I'll explain more details about that in a moment, because. Um, here we are, onto the forms of this cave section, and basically, if you ever stumble across this enemy right here, well, assuming if depending on the forms of the different color hair, which meaning, for example, if I just some, somehow beaten this enemy as Donkey Kong, basically, you hear this jingle right there? That's how you find one of the blueprints. So, yeah, that is how you're essentially trying to get it. And if you see that purple hair right there, that will be important for later. And I'm presuming to you that the enemies do respawn every once in a while. So yeah, I believe for Donkey Kong, if you ever see that yellow hair for him, basically though, that's how you essentially gonna get the blueprint for Donkey Kong. So, anyway, so that pretty much takes care of it from here. Now let's go ahead and switch over to Diddy Kong right here, so we can able to actually see him in action for, uh, for quite some time. So anyway, how it works for Diddy Kong? Well, he's basically, he's kind of like the fastest uh, uh, Kong so far. And basically, as you can see, uh, rather than collecting yellow bananas, just like Donkey Kong, so instead, uh, Diddy Kong gets its own selections of collectibles, ranging from red bananas, in addition to red um, banana coins, and in addition to that though, the uh, banana medal, which once again it's 75 you have to collect, and on top of that, the red blueprint, so... Yeah, this is going to be a quite of a marathon of collector funds, especially considering about the fact that this game is massive enough as it is. Although apparently, though, most people seem to able to don't really care about the forms of 101% in the game as much, uh, compared to the forms of how it doesn't on any other Donkey Kong Country games. But I will able to actually consider to able to find myself like I might as well be up for the challenge, like I said before. Ever since enjoying forms of in on Monday, so. Anyway, so, so let's go ahead and uh, swim about, just to ensure about the fact that there are certain collectibles I've missed. Although, frankly though, that certain collectibles aren't too much of a pain to able to actually just to get them. So, um, relatively speaking though, it's just about the fact that matter is though, is the fact that, well, uh, that's as far as I can try to honestly try to explain about the forms of the entire game itself. Because mind you, about the fact that it will be very, very, very lengthy. I highly doubt we're probably not going to be able to be completing this uh, throughout the whole month of January. But possibly at some point during the forms of in February, if possible. But either way though, we'll just see what happens in due time. So either way though, let's just go ahead and go for this little cave right here. Because I see that red banana right there. And also I see the red haired dude right here, which means the blueprint must be inside him. So, thankfully we were able to get that. And of course some more banana coins for Diddy Kong right here. And yeah, certain uh, objects are completely transparent. 
So this means about the fact that this will be only be accessible for other characters for sure. So in some cases though, yeah, I believe these are yellow banana coins, which meaning only Donkey Kong can only collect them. So yeah, I guess that figured that much because obviously about the fact that, well, this is why I mean when it comes to the forms of this game sometimes, is the fact that this game does require you to be able to go for a lot of backtracking around here, especially considering about the fact that there are some tons of collectibles in the game, meaning about the fact that you have to go through so many stuff as far as this game contains, so... But I digress. Yeah, it's still a shame about the fact that, well, you can no longer get this game on the Wii U once until when it gets to March. Because obviously, though, the only option that's left for you is, of course, play on the emulator or get the original cartridge version. And that's about it, basically. So, uh, which I'm ho hoping that this game will be able to actually get itself its uh, NSO uh, launch kind of thing. But uh, anyway, so that verbal dude, let's get ourselves our first ability for Diddy Kong. In some cases, we get ourselves Chimpy Charge. So in some cases though, obviously if you dare to uh, charge, basically it allows you to able to not only do your headbutt, but also you can run a bit faster for a short period of time. So either way though, that's uh, that's about it basically. Oh yeah, I might also try to consider getting Diddy Kong a weapon too, so uh... Hopefully, we might also get the chance for able to do this kind of stuff, so, uh... Anywho, so let's just go ahead and activate that switch again, because I somehow accidentally entering into, uh, Cranky's lab from earlier. But, uh, hopefully we'll get ourselves our first Golden Banana as Diddy Kong. So, because, you know, he's the only one who can able to actually just get that Golden Banana, so... Alright, so we'll just teleport from here. And since it's about the fact that certain uh, golden bananas are, you know, as I said, they are self-explanatory for the most part, but some of them require you to be able to go for a time limit. So thankfully, we've actually got more time to do it. So in some cases, we'll just have to keep on doing a lot of rolling. And there we go, first golden banana for Diddy Kong. Now, originally, though, speaking of Diddy Kong, actually, I was originally trying to able to go ahead and deal with uh, Diddy Kong Racing for the Nintendo 64 for doing Let's Play, but um, unfortunately, though, I haven't got around to it because obviously I've got distracted by a lot of things. So, anyway, so now we can able to actually access two peanut pop guns. So in some cases, we can now able to shoot. Uh, peanuts are not only enemies, but also certain switches as well, but only for Diddy Kong, so... And by the way, I really love the actual bracket names as an altern alternative uh, names for certain stuff, ranging from special moves or special weapons you get, because I found it quite uh, humorous. So, anyways, let's blast ourselves for the cannon, and we got two additional banana coins as well, so that'll be pretty handy on my part. And obviously though, you remember the forms of that, oh yeah, there are occasional moments where basically as you can see, that we actually stumble across this huge box containing the forms of, let's just say, watermelon slices, meaning about the fact that you can get some more health back, so, and exponentially, you don't necessarily get extra lives in this game, so you, no matter what though, you can die as many times as you want to this time around, because obviously it involves around a lot of exploration, and on top of that is the fact that while there's no necessary worries about the forms of getting, like, too many deaths, well, apart from a couple of exceptions though, but either way, though, that might be saying something, so... Anyway, so let's go up to this spiral staircase, or spiral, uh, section, which, fundamentally speaking, it does remind me of something related to, um, Spiral Mountain a little bit, from the likes of in Banjo kazooie except the fact that I think this is time-based for that particular spiral path, so, in some cases, though, yeah, we need to enter this hole right here, as you can see, to not only grab certain collectibles like the usual bananas, and I get this strong feeling that might be containing another golden banana around here somewhere, so... <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm really sorry about that, because I think I've got something stuck in my throat, but uh, I will try to able to sort it out, uh, possibly by that time until this coming Friday, so... Alright, so we've actually activated that switch over there, and, uh, 
Oh boy, it's gonna be one of those uh, tiny platforming segments we have to simply go through for that point. Actually, while I'm at it, let me just go ahead and grab some more uh, red bananas from here. And uh, also there's the red banana coin just up there, which I was expecting to try to able to like... Uh, do a bit of a backflip, but uh, apparently I didn't pay attention to that at all, so... Whoops. And what's even stranger is the fact that um, usually that Diddy Kong Racing has never saw a re-release for the likes of the forms of the Wii U Virtual Console re-release, which I honestly don't understand why, how that is. But either way though, let's just go ahead and uh, activate that switch again, because I figured that we can probably... Hopefully we can able to try this again before we're able to go for this area right here, so uh... Oh boy, this will be uh... This will be something. Because this particular section right there kinda reminds me like a Super Monkey Ball platforming style. Except the fact that there's no bottomless pit or anything else like that, so we'll just have to... Tilt the control stick a little bit, and don't be so hasty. So, there we go. We've activated the switch, so that means that as soon as when the camera decides to able to pan into the outside portion, that way we get ourselves another golden banana. But, we'll save that for later, because obviously we need to still need to double check on certain parts throughout in this area. So... And also, we stumbled across the familiar enemy from the likes of the Donkey Kong Country games, which not only do we able to see uh, beavers, but also zingers as well. So, even then though, kudos to the forms of Rare Rare to able to bring back certain uh, enemies from the likes of the past games. Well, to be more specifically, the Donkey Kong Country games for sure. So anyway, let's just go ahead and uh, continue things on here. And yeah, let me go ahead and try to grab that banana coin from up there. So we'll just essentially try to do a long jump, which as a result, it kind of reminds me of the forms of Super Mario 64 uh, long jumps sometimes. But hey, at least it's pretty easy to manage to able to make our way from this point right here. So anyway, so let's go ahead and do a chippy charge right onto... Oh, that didn't work. Uh, let me go closer. There we go. Because that way, getting closer is key, because obviously about the fact that that's the only essential way for, uh, you know, trying to able to proceed for this for the most part. I mean, sure, it's all I can really think about it. So, um, yeah, still, I'm very curious about the fact that, well, relatively speaking, that, um, exponentially, only 16 days to go until specifically, um, you know, Fire Emblem Engage is going to be releasing on the Nintendo Switch, which, again, I was expecting that I was trying to get it on day one, but I did not able to actually don't see the point for getting there. Although, mind you, everyone else is pretty excited for the game, obviously, but I'm not that kind of, like, Fire Emblem kind of guy, because as a result, that I, uh, most able to did try one of those games before, in this case, Fire Emblem Warriors, but unfortunately though, it doesn't seem to interest me as much as the forms of the Zelda stuff, but... No, that's just the way I feel about it, but either way. Actually, I just realized, yeah, in order to be able to deal with these particular type of variations of these enemies right here, in order to deal with them, you have to utilize the forms of that particular, um, orange bomb, so that way you can able to actually instantly kill them like so. And something tells me about the fact that we need to get up there for the next challenge. So in some cases, let's ground pound to this little switch, so that way we can able to open up these doors. And I can definitely see that particular... Oh, the door actually closes. Okay. Um, but of course, you can able to reactivate that switch if you wanted to. But of course, keep in mind is the fact that once you're done with those enemies, the enemies do respawn every once in a while. So that might be... Uh, a mucins at times, but either way. Oh, there's a, uh, a banana balloon that I need to able to pop. But first off, let me go ahead and take care of this, uh, Kremlin first. And that way we can able to get ourselves our next, uh, banana balloon to pop. There we go. Ten additional bananas we've got. So, nicely done. And I believe, if I recall correctly, that those, uh, conveyor belts might actually be time-based as well. Because I can definitely notice right from the start, though, that, well, sometimes, though, is the fact that the camera just sometimes sends you the forms of the weirdest, uh, perspective sometimes. But either way, though, I'm sure you might get the hang of it, though, but either way, let's just, uh, 
keep on trying and I think something tells me one of those sections is closed, so... But at the very least, we can able to keep on, like, uh, reactivating the switch again if we somehow managed to make... Oh, God! <laughs> I somehow managed able to step onto one of those tougher enemies right there. Oh, that's actually interesting. Oh, and also something's worth mentioning for is the fact that, uh, exponentially, that, uh... I think that's about it as far as discussions goes. Although, I would have liked to be able to mention something more. But, um, honestly, that's all I can really think about. And sure enough, yeah, that particular gate is closed, so... But at the very least, we'll get ourselves another banana coin from here. And we'll just go ahead and do a chimpy charge from here until we're able to activate the conveyor belts again. Because when it shows green, this means that the actual gate is now fully opened for the next challenge up ahead. But, uh... Oh yeah, I still need to activate that particular switch to progress. Alright, so we'll just go ahead and uh, try this section again. And hopefully, without any sort of hesitation, or without any, like, disturbance or distractions. And there we go. And I think something tells me, yep, we're going to the minecart. Which leads us to one of the next challenges we can do. And basically, in this challenge right here, is the fact that obviously we need to make, make our way to the very end of this particular minecart section. But here's the catch though, is the fact that as you can see, there are tons of DK coins. And basically, in order to able to get the golden banana on this challenge, basically you have to collect about 50 of those coins. And uh, even then, it might be seems pretty easy and self-explanatory, because as far as I'm aware, I did somehow manage to able to like... But if I first experienced this game back in very, very long time ago with the, the original cartridge version, then I've somehow managed to watch a countless amount of those uh, gameplay demo footages, ranging between not only jungle hijinks within both Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong, but also other future levels to come, that I actually really enjoy watching them, by the way, because they are pretty fascinating to see the actual gameplay in action. But anyway though, at every time whenever you get hit by certain uh, objects or certain hazards, that um, exponentially you will able to lose uh, your uh, DK coins. So it's the uh, best advice to able to be incredibly uh, careful, especially that you really don't are able to lose the challenge. Because otherwise, if you don't have enough coins with you, then you're going to have to retry that challenge again. So it takes a bit of some time to able to actually just to like... You know, trying to be more, like, uh, patience, or to be more specifically, it requires a lot of, uh, timing. Because otherwise, if you time it wrong, then obviously you will make tons of mistakes. So, in fact, a lot of challenges like that will have a similar kind of mechanic. But, uh, either way, though, you just have to back up a little, so just in case we don't get hit by those, uh, TNT barrels, apart from one. But either way, though, it, I suppose it doesn't matter. But uh, thankfully, there are some alternative routes you can able to uh, take through. Assuming if about the fact that you really don't are able to go into the path where it only contains like lesser amounts of those DK coins. But there we go. We've actually got enough uh, DK coins, so that'll pretty much leads us to the second golden banana as Diddy Kong. So, so far, we actually got seven. And hopefully we'll get another one until whenever we reach at the very top of that particular uh, mountain site. So, but of course I do need some more health though after all because I somehow managed to able to like, almost going to be dying. So, alright, and I think there's another banana bunch right there. So in addition to that, we also get ourselves a banana medal for Diddy Kong. So, and then what happens if you do manage to able to get yourselves uh, 100 bananas in each uh, Kong? Well, it's only for bragging rights, I guess. Although, aside from the fact that I will able to try my best to able to go through, you know, just to collect everything in, your, in that path. So anyways, let's go ahead and uh, bring out the peanut pop gun so we can able to activate that switch again. Well, assuming if my uh, aiming radical doesn't seem to able to be extremely accurate, but uh, at the very least, we can able to activate that particular spiral uh, path thingy again. So... Yeah, the music itself, it does remind me like a Banjo-Kazooie vibe when it comes to the music itself. But anyway, let's get ourselves the next golden banana. And we got eight so far. So, nicely done. 
And of course, we can able to activate uh, the pad number five. And also, I see there's a banana balloon, the specifically the red color balloon. So we're able to actually get 10 additional bananas as such. So I think we've almost done with collecting these bananas in this world between uh, both Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong. But of course, there might be still more later on though. So yeah, we got the endings off this point right here, I'm afraid, guys. So join me next time for more of Let's Play of Donkey Kong 64. It's the fact that we'll continue things on in Jungle Hijinks as both Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong to grab the rest of the collectibles there. And that's about it, basically. So I'll see you guys until on Friday. Later, fellas.